So thank you very much, Ida, for coming to, uh, to join us, to meet us again. Uh, we have met Ida, Ida Ruth, um, visiting a junior lab in Alto University with European teachers. We usually did that to uh, see how um, universities open up to support uh, schools and teachers in different of the levels, primary, lower, secondary, and second to see how design is supporting uh, science and uh, art all together. So thank you very much, Ida. Uh, just before I let you uh, discuss, we have briefly uh, touched upon the subject before uh, we, um, we made an appointment and Ida mentioned two very interesting projects or programs. One is entrepreneurship, and design for high school. And the mm -hmm. second one was a monthly uh, topic uh, yes. for, to support primary schools. And both of them you mentioned, and I was looking through the articles, uh, allow junior labs to support nationwide schools. So to have yes. a bigger impact. Please share with us. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for inviting me to discuss about these topics. Uh, yeah. Junior, I, it's been like, um, how to say, we've been in a turbulence as many other places as well due to the COVID epidemic. And usually we are arranging most of our uh, program in our facilities in Otaniemi Espo, Finland. We have a laboratory there, which we called Aldo Junior Lab. And that's where we organize our uh, multidisciplinary teaching. But due to the fact that the COVID is uh, affecting to all of us, uh, we are switched, uh, we switch our operating methods into virtual teaching. So now we are still, uh, still operating, but uh, we are operating virtually. And the uh, positive effect is that when we're operating virtually, we're able to reach schools, teachers, kids, youth nationwide in Finland. They don't have to come to Espo anymore. They can book in a meeting, a virtual teaching lesson and participate all the way from Lapland, for example. So <laughs> yeah, now, now we have increased our accessibility. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned uh, this when we talked as well, this turbulence moment, which meant for your programs or for you, for Junior Lab to both adapt and also focus. We have seen the opening now that the programs uh, are open and accessible to who, wherever children are. Also on your website, I have seen that with these um, actions, you also support parents because in some cases, the learning was at home. So yeah. tell us a few things about uh, the programs you like during uh, this period. Yes, uh, well, uh, for parents and kids at home, we have these try at home, uh, try at home section in our webpage. So uh, we have multidisciplinary disciplinary, uh, workshops from all the fields of all the universities. So basically all the junior, I usually say that we are all the university in a nutshell. So all the different fields that you can study or, or uh, there's uh, some kind of, well, all the fields you can study in all the university are somehow also represented in all the junior. So we offer different kind of workshop materials on our web pages that kids can try at home, for example, from uh, chemistry, design, physics, technology, and they are pretty, pretty easy for also kids to just read the uh, how to do manuals also on their own or they can do them with their siblings or with their parents and we want to offer them simple simple materials that they can easily get from the grocery stores and so that way they are accessible for for them that's one of our one of our new ad like new added uh, methods 
due to the COVID. And we also post these in our Instagram. Since COVID pandemic, we have increased our activity also in, in social media. So teachers and parents can find these workshops also from the, our Instagram page. So activating Instagram, these try at home workshops, and then there are the virtual class lessons for teachers to book for their students for their classes. Then we have had few courses for high schoolers that are also virtual. And then we have theme weeks on changing sub subjects. For example, before Christmas, we had had a theme week about light and it was for primary school. Primary school kids, uh, we held the same workshop multiple times. So there were different times teachers were able to participate with their classes. There were, uh, I'm sorry, I don't recall anymore, but there were like tens of different classes all around, all around Finland that participated. So it has been really brilliant how many different schools all over Finland have participated these theme weeks we have arranged. So, Ida, did the teachers and the classes joined um, Alto virtually? Yes. So, uh, whenever we have a virtual class, our teachers, our junior teachers, they create a team, uh, this Microsoft Teams, uh, Teams meeting. They send the invitation for the teacher and they use the video call. So, we actually, since uh, last spring when we, uh, no, it was actually, sorry, <laughs> autumn, we built uh, this tiny studio to our facilities. So we were able to broadcast there the virtual teaching. That's great. I, I visited last time in March, one of Alto University micro um, facilities, micro studios, and mm -hmm. it, it's really amazing. It, it yeah. feels very close to a normal class environment. So, um, Ida, of course, uh, the article itself sends uh, the links to your web page so teachers in Europe can see um, about your work and see more about your work. But I would like to ask you, in the end, um, you are also a researcher in design. I would uh, like to... I'd yeah, would like, yeah, I'm actually not a researcher. I'm a, I'm oh. a responsible. <laughs> oh, you're responsible. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, in principal in arts and design. In arts and design. Yeah, yeah. And I have my master's in art education. Okay, even better for this question. Uh, Ida, I would like to ask you, have you noticed, you mentioned in the beginning with this turbulence, both focus and adaptation. Have mm -hmm. you noticed? Or while you were adapting with whole junior lab, have you noticed um, differences in shifting the way classes, the way teachers, students learn art and science together? Well, uh, let me think. Well, of course, when we started these virtual classes, the kids and the teacher had somewhat experience already being in remote mood, mode already during spring because there was a lockdown in Finland so kids weren't able to participate in the in the teaching so uh, we all have had to come up with new ways on how to have a dialogue or some kind of uh, like communication when other people are like in the zoom meeting or in Microsoft teams how to keep it natural so I think they are now used to in the classes to have some part of the education virtually and uh, teachers have adapted to using different platforms. Well, like I mentioned, Zoom and Microsoft Teams, like they know how to use the cameras and these different technologies, but well, I have felt it's it's been really positive. It's it's uh, they don't they're not able to leave the classroom, but they have other possibilities to reach. For example, we offer these virtual lectures, 
So even though they can't visit universities or they can't visit all the junior to meet these people from different fields, they're somehow able to have them speak in the class and the kids are still able to ask questions, for example, via the chat or the teacher puts the microphone on. And uh, I think what's new is probably, I would say that people are more open to different kind of teaching methods. And uh, before, because for example, in, in other parts of Finland, they, they weren't able to just hop on a bus and come to Aalto Junior and see what's going on. But now that they have the different connection via virtual teaching, they're able to gain more knowledge of how we in Aalto University teach science together with arts. And we offer these practical, uh, concrete examples that this is how we can teach chemistry with art, or this is how we can combine entrepreneurship and design. And this is how they are actually linked in real life. We, we offer these real life examples for wider audiences with our virtual teaching. And people are more, more keen and now they know that, okay, this kind of uh, ways exist, I can book an, an appointment via junior webpage and reach for these uh, different kind of teaching materials. Thank <laughs> like, you very much. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, no, so I, think, I hope this uh, answer to your question. Yes, completely, actually. Uh, dialogue, communication, Yes. These are two very important that now, even more now stressed by the new online environment, we had to pay even more attention. And yeah. you take care of that in Finland, but this was a general problem. Everybody had to uh, to handle this, uh, pay attention yeah. to the dialogue and communication. And uh, uh, lastly, opening up uh, universities and opening up uh, schools to mm -hmm. like job related or real life related interests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a challenge because there are a lot of young children and they might have problems like focusing. If I would have a virtual class, of course, I couldn't have a one hour monologue and talking in front of the camera about the subject. So somehow we need to have dialogue and communication. So we have divided the one hour class so that we have really, really compact, compact start and somewhat 15 minutes and then they are doing the learning by doing themselves and then we have all this ending talk when they can show what they have done in the class to the camera so our teachers can also give them feedback of, of for example if they do some crafts or arts in the class the teacher can take pictures and send the pictures to our teachers and we can comment what they are doing in the class and give them feedback. I, I think it's really important for the particip participant kids also to get some feedback from the teachers of the class. Yes, you're right. And uh, we, uh, we end up this visit with Ida <laughs> virtually for now, for this year, uh, with these, the, not tips, but rather these um, essential elements of learning virtually and online. It's not staying on monologue, mm. uh, learning by doing, and then receiving yeah. feedback from colleagues, from teacher, and from the experts which, yes. to whom we are looking uh, towards um, inspiration as uh, students. Okay, thank you very much, Ida, for joining and for thank having this interview with us. Thank you for having me.